If you got your health back to a relatively healthy state, eating a carnivore, a keto diet, or paleo, or basically using nutrition to get healthier, and now you don't really use your insurance, whether it's from your company, whether you pay an insurance company to have health coverage, you may want to listen to this conversation about crowdfunding healthcare. Our family does not use the traditional healthcare because it's just so expensive. We don't really need to go to the doctors much. Sometimes I can pull blood work for our family, but essentially we don't have many symptoms or situations where we need to go visit the doctor often. And so we have chosen very carefully to not have traditional healthcare coverage. We have a alternative coverage that we currently have where it's for bigger, let's say we sprain an ankle or we need to get a cast or we have to do surgery for a broken bone. In those cases, we do or have coverage for those things. And so it's been a change in the way that I grew up having medical insurance my whole life. So just in case, and even back then, when I was young, I didn't really go to the doctors that often other than maybe a wellness check, but we all know that insurance and the medical system has become so expensive. Whenever we have an issue, if we ever went into an ambulance, we know how expensive that bill will be, but there are different alternatives. And in this conversation, we talk about it. Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. My name is Judy Cho and I'm board certified in holistic nutrition. And I have a private practice where we focus on root cause healing. And that often starts with the carnivore cures, all meat elimination diet. Today, I had the pleasure of sitting down with Andy Schoonover. He is the CEO of crowd health. It's basically crowdfunding for healthcare. So it's not insurance, but if you have a medical bill that you need to pay as part of this community, they help you pay the bill. If you're tired of having to beg your doctor for certain blood works or certain lab markers or asking your doctor for certain things that they may not want to do for you because their fear of insurance coverage, this may be the place for you. We talk about all the nuances of how to get coverage, what that means, how to pay bills and how this works and why even hospitals, insurance companies are expensive and why our medical system is so expensive. Let's get right into the interview. Hi, Andy. Thank you so much for joining me today. I've been really excited to chat with you about all things uh, crowdfunding for healthcare. If you can introduce yourself and then share a little bit about what got you into crowdfunding, especially your story about your daughter. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. My name is Andy Schoonover. I'm CEO of Crowd Health. This is my second healthcare company. And I promised myself after my first one, I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> Given that healthcare is just such a crazy place to be, you know, operating a business. But I rolled off of my first one. I didn't have health insurance because most of us get through health insurance through our employer. And so I went on the Affordable Care Act or the Obamacare plan and got a plan for me, my wife and my two girls. And it was about 1200 bucks a month. And I was thought that, that was my only option. And I kind of joke, it worked until I had to use it. My little one, who was one at the time, was having recurring ear infections. And so we went to the ear, nose, and throat doc, who told us that she had a, a hole in her eardrum and we needed to get tubes in her ears. So we went and got tubes in her ears. It was pre-authorized by our health plan. A couple of weeks later, we got the bill. It was $8,000 for a 15-minute procedure. Oh, my gosh. And Then a few weeks after that, we got another note in the mail from our health insurance plan who said it was medically unnecessary. And so they weren't going to pay for it. And um, we went through three rounds of a cabinet appeals process. And at the end, you know, I think it was like an ophthalmologist over there, you know, a doctor who looks at your eyes basically said that something in her ears was not, you know, worthy of medical attention. And so you know, at that point where I knew that the health care system was just totally busted. And so I called my health plan. I said, I quit. If you're not going to pay my bills, I'm not paying your bills. And so I have been, uh, as I say, delightfully uninsured for the last four plus years and have built a company to help people who are tired of health insurance viably operate outside of the health insurance system. So that's, that's what crowd health is. Okay. It's such a fascinating story. I'll I'll share a couple of mine. So we had decent health insurance And I had my first baby. And even with that insurance, it cost us $25,000 out of pocket. Um, And that was still with a consulting firm, supposedly some of the best insurance paid out everything. And I remember I asked for a water bottle, like an extra one, because I was nursing. So we get really thirsty. 
And they said it's a few hundred dollars. So it's probably better to just buy one, you know, out outside on the at the grocery store or something. And and then I have a cousin that was at that time, or when she had her baby, we're, we're the same age. She just happened to not have a job. So she was on some governmental assistance and she had her baby essentially for free. And mm-hmm. I mean, I know some people need the care, but I just, I couldn't help but feel like, geez, like it's not fair. I work hard. And then I still paid about $25,000 out of pocket for having a child. And some people just can have a baby for free in the same hospital. We had another incident where then we decided to go high deductible because we're pretty, we have pretty healthy lifestyles until like you said, uh, my son ran into a wall and then had to get stitches. And that one incident cost us like $2,500 and we had to pay because they're like, sorry, you didn't, haven't met the deductible. Right. And it just didn't make sense. And so I think the work that you do is so important. Can you walk us through? So is it like insurance? If you could walk us through, how does it work? Yeah, the key to to makes us work is that we enable our members to pay in cash for their procedures. And the benefit of that is that the doctors then give us our members really, really good rates because they hate health insurance as much as we do. And so for every doctor, there's about three people that they have to employ to bill health insurance. And then they never know how much they're gonna get paid from health insurance. They don't get paid for two, three, four months later. And so in what, what essence, what we do is we enable people to pay for big bills or small bills in cash. And therefore we're getting for our members about 50% better rates than what health insurance plans are getting from, from hospitals and, and other places. And so I'll walk through the mechanics of how it works. I think we're up to past 7,000 people now that have used crowd health. Tens, I think 10 or 12,000 bills thus far. But if Andy has a broken arm and it's $5,000, we will go to, which is a 50 of those people in the community and say, hey, will you help Andy with his broken arm? Um, and if they say yes, then $100 goes from them to Andy and Andy, you know, and ultimately we will get 50 people to help me. And so then I will have the $5,000 to go and pay for my, my broken arm. And so then the question is like, okay, why would random people help Andy? Right? Well, when I ask for money, the members who I'm asking will see two things about me. One is, have I been a good member of the community? So when I've been asked for money, Have I said yes, 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 yes? Or have I said no, 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 right? And so far, everybody who said yes, 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 when they asked for funding from the community, the the community has funded them. So like I said, that's thousands of bills. And that's from tiny little pediatrician bills to hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of brain hemorrhage bills. And we have a $350,000 bill right now that we're negotiating. And so it works really, really well. So I will then go take that $5,000. I will pay for my broken arm and that health event will be will be done. And so that's in essence what happens is we've got a community of people that we go out and we say, hey, will you help some member in your community? And the beautiful thing about that is that the, you know exactly where your money is going, right? You know exactly every month that your money is going to you know, I don't, I don't say Andy, but a male in Austin who broke his arm, as opposed to sending it to United Healthcare, who you have no idea how that money is, is being used. Right. So for members under 55, it's $180 a month. Mm-hmm. So it's $50 of membership fee and $135 of, we'll ask up to $135 to help somebody else directly in the community. Um, we'll ask people 55 and above for $270. And we'll ask families for $405. So every month we'll ask you for around that amount. And that amount will then be sent from your account to somebody in the community who needs help. And so it is a peer-to-peer funding of health events that over the last three years has worked beautifully. How do you delineate between someone that's 50? So I I get the age difference just because if you're older, there's a higher chance of possibly illness. But what about if you're just healthier? So I'll give you an example of my family. We're a a family of four and we're all meat based and probably the strictest of the whole family. And we're pretty healthy. And so we really only need, I guess, big insurance for big accidents. So if like my son were to break his leg, which can happen since they love climbing trees, we have a crowdsourcing insurance, but we also have heard that 
they cover a lot of the big things, but with smaller care or alternative care, they can actually decline your services. And so we pay for it monthly right now, but I just don't know what they're going to end up covering, but it was Mm. better than having zero insurance type care. So how do you delineate if our family is healthier, do we still pay the same amount with say a family that has a 40 year old mom that's diabetic, whereas I'm not on any medication, nothing. Sure. Yeah. So there's a couple things there. One is we, there's, there's a pre-existing condition clause. Okay. So if you have a pre-existing condition, then you have to be with the community for two years. You got to have skin in the game with the community before the community will help you out with that pre-existing condition. Okay. So you can't just jump in, get a knee replacement and jump out. And in fact, we had that happen early on and we we're like, hold on a second. This isn't right. Like if you're going to be a part of the mem- member of the community, you got to have some skin in the game. And so that keeps a lot of people from, you know, submitting bills, you know, early on. The other thing too, is a lot of our members look like you, um, you know, in terms of being very, very healthy. Mm-hmm. So our BMI is about five points below than the okay. national average. Our average member is 34. We, you know, have most of our bills last month, I think it was about 75% of our bills were either active injuries or pregnancies. So we got people who, you know, are having babies and, you know, out and doing stuff that is, that are, that's active and it's ACL tears and, you know, things like that, that just happens when, when you're active. So we have a huge keto carnivore, you know, following. So we get a, a big chunk of our members are in that, you know, kind of keto carnivore. I am as well. I'm I'm primarily keto. And so you you're 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 joining a group of people who do think about their health differently. Given that we are so different from health insurance, you get people who are, you know, kind of contrarians right. by nature who are like, I don't want to be a part of this big corporate machine, this medical industrial complex, as I call it. I want to be a part of something different. And so we've got a great group of people who, you know, do do take care of their health. So I think, you know, a family like yours would feel at home. Okay. And then what about alternative care? So I'll give you an example. We work with some people in our practice where they might have mold illness. And for some of the medical establishments, they don't recognize it. Maybe they don't have an ICD code or they don't have something specific. So in the the group that I'm in, they decline people that because they say it's not medically re- recognized. And so because mm-hmm. it's considered alternative, they get mm-hmm. declined. But mm-hmm. I know it's a real medical issue where you could even get blood work for it and stuff. Do you cover, like, how do you know what to cover versus like someone just getting a massage and saying, Hey, I had back pain. I wanted to have a spa day. Yeah, sure. No, that's a, it's a really good question. And you know, the, the kind of philosophy that we've taken is it should be between you and your doctor. So if you are getting something from an MD, a DO, a DC, or a doctor of naturopathic medicine, then it is something that we will submit to the community, assuming that it meets all the other kind of regulations on pre-existing conditions and things like that. And so we, we just trust that the, the members are doing right and for, okay. for their bodies and the doctors are doing right for the members. And so, you know, will there be a little bit of probably, you know, stuff that shouldn't be submitted, submitted? Yes. But we also think that that benefits the community because these are people who are thinking about their their health in a non-Western way. It's not a pill first type of mentality. And those are the doctors that we love to send people to. And in fact, we're building a database of doctors who are kind of non-Western docs who we can send people to, who can kind of look at root causes, start with nutrition and, you know, have prescription pills be kind of the last option as opposed to the first option, which our, our current medical you know system is, is built upon. Right. I love that. I, lo- I love that so much. And I think it's so smart because that is a question we get often. We don't prescribe currently, but we're working towards partnering with the doctor, but we'll get people that want to get off their thyroid meds, but don't want to work with their traditional doctor anymore. And it's, but then we can't do that prescription. So then they just ask, do you know anyone that could just prescribe my thyroid medication until I can fully get off? So I think that makes so much sense when they get the bill. So then do you, do you argue the bill? Do like, how does that part work where you're like negotiating? So when I get my $25,000 bill, is there a way that then I can, if I'm part of this group that I could have negotiated that down, like where I don't have to pay 
$700 for aspirin as an example. Yeah, absolutely. Because I, I learned with my $8,000 bill, it should have been probably a $1,500 bill. And I didn't know that I couldn't negotiate. And so we do negotiate on your behalf, okay. or we can show you how to negotiate with which gotcha. whatever you prefer. And so I unfortunately was in the ER eight, eight weeks ago, 10 mm -hmm. weeks ago, something like that. It was nothing. It ended up being nothing. I had a, a really bad migraine, but they took an MRI and the hospital charged me $3,500 for the MRI and the radiology group charged me $3,500 for the MRI. So mm -hmm. I was charged $7,000 for an MRI. And one was for the actual service provided. And the other one was for the interpretation of the oh MRI. Oh my gosh. And so <laughs> I called the radiology group's local bricks and mortar. You will know this radiology group because you're in Austin. And I said, how much would that MRI be if I walked in, you know, to your, your office? And they said, well, it'd be $1,500 if you pay in cash. And I was like, okay, is that for the service or the interpretation? And they said both. And I was right. like, hold on a second. You charged me. $3,800 or something like that, $3,500, $3,800 for just the interpretation. But if I walked in and paid cash, you would do $1,500 for the interpretation and uh, you know the, the, the service. And so I said, I'm going to take you to small claims court because this is price gouging. Right. And she said, hold on a second. So you know, 15 seconds goes by, 30 seconds, you know, a minute in, I think. She comes back and she's like, if you give me a credit card right now, I'll reduce your $3,800 bill to $400. You know, would you do it? I'm like, done. And so yeah. we, I negotiated it by, you know, 88% in, you know, 12 minutes in essence. And so, you know, that's just one example, but almost all of these bills, you can negotiate down 50, 60, 70% because they are full of things, you know, like you, like you mentioned. And so it would, it would blow you away the, the stuff that we see in these hospital bills that are just fake, you know, false bony, you know, type of bills where the services were never rendered. I was, you know, exiting the hospital and occupational therapists and a physical therapist walked in. They said, Hey, put on these socks. I put on socks. They said, brush your teeth. I went and brushed my teeth. And they said, walk down the hall 20 feet. So I walked down the hall 20 feet. And they're like, great. You're okay to go home. I was like, okay. So I got the bill and they charged me eight 15 minute visits for those three things. And they were there for 15 minutes. They charged me for eight visits for $2,500 total. And so another example of just these hospitals will do crazy things that if you don't catch them, you're going to end up paying for them. We provide the service on the back end to look through those bills, make sure they're correct, make sure they're fair. We'll negotiate them for you. And so we, you know, it's probably one of my favorite services at, at Crowd Health is help people, you know, work through some of these hospital bills. Yeah. I want to talk really quickly about why you think it costs more, but before I move on, so we run MRIs for certain people in our practice. And I think if they pay out of pocket, if they don't have insurance or they don't want to use insurance, if they find the right lab, they can get it for probably 550. I don't yeah. know if that includes the interpretation, but yeah, it is crazy that they charge you 8,000. Yeah. Given everything we're talking about, what do you think is costing or why is it so expensive? We ask some of our clients and patients to get blood work because through their doctor, they can at least get it insured. And we'll ask for certain blood markers that are not as common on the standard, I guess, the wellness panel that you'll go to. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of the times the doctor then pushes back. And we found that the main reason is the doctors then don't want to have to get a call from insurance saying, why did you do this blood work? Because they don't fit the bill of somebody that needs it. Right. And we're not going to cover it. And they don't want to fight that fight. So right. they'd rather just play it safe and give you this little box of blood work so that they don't have to worry about getting it not covered. Mm -hmm. But other mm -hmm. than that, I mean, other than blood work, you know, what are the things like, what's the red tape that makes everything so expensive? It's cheaper yeah. for me to go to almost any other country and have a baby than have it in America? Yeah, it's it's a really good question. I think, you know, Princess Kate, Kate had her baby, her last baby in UK at basically the Ritz Carlton of hospitals in the, in downtown London. I think it was for $9,000. Okay. And our average in the United States is $15,000. I believe it. And, you know, and so it's like these crazy things that it's, it's there's something weird going on here. And let me tell you where I, what I think it is, is, Everybody was like, why is it so expensive? Well, you have the, the sellers of healthcare, which are these big hospital systems. They clearly want the highest price. And I don't you know, blame them for that. They, it's, it's a 
I'm all about capitalism. You should try to charge the highest price you can. But the problem here is that the buyers of healthcare are health plans and health plans actually want the prices to go up. And here's the reason why. Under the Obamacare rules, the health insurance plans maximize their profit at 15% of premiums. So let's just say to make math easy, you have a thousand dollar premium, 15% uh, of that is 150 bucks. That's the most the health plan can make is 150 bucks. Uh -huh. okay. So oh, how, do they, how do they make 10% more, $165 on you? Well, your premium has to go from $1,000 to $1,100. Mm -hmm. So you're, you know, it's a principal agent problem. The health insurance pro is supposed to be your agent. They're trying to find you. They're supposed to try to find you, you know, really good prices. But in fact, they're incentivized to, right. to have prices rise. So you have the buyers of healthcare, the health plans, the sellers of healthcare, the hospital systems, they both want the price to go up. And so guess what? The price goes up, right? That's what in essence is happening. You know, it's pretty simplistically, but in essence, that's what's happening because of government regulation primarily. You know, buyer and seller want the price to go up, prices are going to go up, and there's nothing, there's no kind of invisible free market hand to keep those prices going down. And that's what we're doing is saying, hey, you as an, as an individual can negotiate better than United Healthcare. You can go in and say, I'm not paying a $300,000 NICU baby bill because I know it didn't cost you $300,000. It probably cost $30,000 or $40,000, which you know you want, you want the hospitals to make money. You don't want them to go out of business, but you also don't want to pay them egregious bills. And, and that's what we help people, people do. Wow. I didn't realize that they make a, a certain percentage off the top. So then you just want the top to be super high so yeah. that you get a bigger cut of that top. And I, I didn't realize it was part of that. And that makes so much sense. I was in an eating disorder facility and I think it was $2,000 a day and our insurance was covering it up to a certain point, but United Healthcare did not want to cover me. So they kept getting me to do blood work. And when my blood work looked fine, regardless of any behaviors mm -hmm. or mental health stuff, they're like, she can't, we're not covering her anymore. Right. And they downgraded my healthcare. And it's, it's just unfortunate because they try to fit you into these things that are, um, that will benefit them ultimately, because I get it, they're a business, but they don't care about the individual at the end. Is there anyone that you would consider, maybe you should stay in traditional insurance and healthcare? Is there any type of person mm -hmm. you think? I mean, unless you have a chronic condition, I, I I do not see any reason for you to be in that system. When you say chronic um, condition, what do you mean? Do you mean like I mean, autoimmune? No. Well, I mean, autoimmune, I, from everything I, I've read and I understand, and I've talked to a lot of people on this, is a lot of the autoimmune conditions are are a product of poor nutrition and, and can be and can be reversed. And so, you know, I think even type 2 diabetes is one where, you know, you get you back on path. I think you need to get reversed. I actually think those conditions are worse within the kind of the typical medical industrial complex than if you were to get outside the medical industrial complex and talk to folks like like you or join a, a, something like crowd health because i think you start thinking about these things differently as opposed to just taking insulin and you know dosing your body with a bunch of prescriptions i'm i'm thinking about other things that are you know, maybe you were born with a condition, born with conge a okay. congenital okay. condition, you know, things like that. I mean, I think that 80% of the chronic conditions that we see, I don't know if you've heard different stats are probably solved with, you know, changes in, in okay. nutrition. And so, you know, there, there are very, maybe very few conditions in which I think that you should be under kind of this, this insurance, you know, from my perspective, Ponzi scheme. No, oh, I love it. So I, so let, let's just walk through a scenario because I'm actually very interested for our family. Yeah, sure. We have this other company that I don't even know if we could rely on them. So if I wanted to get my son's wellness check, I would mm -hmm. go to any hospital I preferred, or do you even have a list, the network that you're kind of mentioning that you're building out? But let's say we go to a doctor, then I get a bill and then do I pay for it there or do, do I start negotiating there? Or do I just come back to you? Like, how does that process work? Yeah. Well, one, don't go to a hospital for a wellness check. <laughs> Two oh, is, God. you know, find a, find a, find a doctor that you like. Okay. Uh, we don't have a network. We okay. do, you know, you can go to anywhere you want. We are building a database of doctors that we think are really, really good. And okay. so if, if we can find one in your area, and in fact, 
interestingly, you're in Austin, I'm in Austin. If, if, if a member is looking for a great doctor in that area, what we'll do is we'll actually reach out to other members mm -hmm. in that area and say, hey, do you have any great doctors? Like we, we want to awesome. crowdsource docs. And I actually came up with this idea because a member like that lives like three streets over from me was looking for a doctor in 78746, which is where I live, our pediatrician. I was like, man, I've got a great pediatrician in 78746. And it like actually brought me joy to give like my pediatrician to this person. Right. And so we help each other with that. So, you know, let's just say you go to the pediatrician, go to the pediatrician, get your kids wellness visit. It's going to be a couple hundred bucks. Probably you pay that you some go to our app. It takes about 10 seconds. You just upload that bill to our app. And let's just say it's 300 bucks. We will then go ask three people for that. Money will then be transferred back to your account from those people so that you have the $300 that you just spent on your, your pediatrician visit. And typically that takes a week or two, you know, okay. some, this is we're putting you out for a long time. It's, it's a week sure. or two to get that back. For bigger ones, bigger events, let's just say you go to the ER, the ER will send you all the bills afterwards so you do that, you give us all the bills, we consolidate them, we will then negotiate with the hospital a great rate. Mm -hmm. And then we'll say, Hey, Judy, you know, we got, you know, your $50,000 bill down to 10,000. Uh, we just, is that okay with you? And then you'll say, yes, we crowdfund that 10,000. So now you have that $10,000 to pay, pay that hospital bill. And so th that's how those, those work. And the cool thing about this is you have a personal care advocate internally at crowd health. So we put you with a care advocate. If you have any questions about how it works, you can text them, you can call them, you can email them. And it's the same person every time that you're talking to. So they get to know you, you get to know them. And they're kind of your guide through, you know, the craziness of our, of our healthcare system. You know, I hated when I had an issue with my daughter calling in, I'd call, talk to somebody in a different country who, you know, didn't understand what I was saying. So they punted me to a different person. I had to tell them my situation again. I'm just like, you know, you can't talk to anybody and get any, you know, definitive answers to your questions. And so I wanted to change that. And so, um, you know, you'll you'll have one of our, our, our care advocates, kind of your personal guide to help you through any of this, if you have any questions. That's amazing. That That does help so much because then when we're lost of like, who do we contact or what do we do? I mean, that's mm -hmm. just a great place to start. So it sounds like for the smaller visits. I should probably negotiate right there with the doctor of, Hey, I'm sort of paying out of pocket. Can I get a lower rate than the 300 that maybe you're charging insurance? So is that? Yeah. All you have to do is just say, do you have a cash pay rate? And okay. most of them have a cash pay rate and that cash pay rate typically is 30 or 40% off. And so we don't worry too much about the little ones. We just say, Hey, ask for the cash pay rate. And nobody really has an issue with that. Okay. You know, everybody with the with the exception of a couple states like Massachusetts and Connecticut, for some reason, are kind of we weird about paying in cash, um, but we still have tons of customers there. But otherwise, you know, doctors are pretty great. Actually, they love getting paid in cash right. as opposed to have to having to uh, to bill a, an insurance company. Yeah, that's amazing. I think it makes a lot of sense. We've had a few where we just did cash pay, so we didn't have to deal with the other right. company that we work with, and we have seen it gone down. I think we. Our optometrist, it's worked. And also recently we went to a doctor to get my son's lungs checked out and they lowered the rate too. So I was yeah. surprised the doctor's visit at a hospital wasn't too expensive. So that makes a lot of sense. If people were to want to get started, how should they go about doing so? Yeah. Um, join crowd health is our website. You can you know, go and sign up there. You can sign up immediately. There's no waiting period or anything like that. You can start and end whenever you want to. So there's no open enrollment periods or things like that. It's a month to month type of, of situation. And for an individual, it takes somewhere between five and 10 minutes to sign up for a family. It's probably 10 to 15 minutes to sign up. So it's a very easy process to, to get signed up. And yeah, you can join, you know, what 7,000 people who who signed up so far and, and doing something a little bit different. And so we, we'd love to have you. Yeah, that's amazing. I'm really glad that people like you are creating options and opportunities for people that may not need to go to the doctor all the time or that just want to get out of the system that is so broken, that's so expensive. I mean, sometimes I think maybe I should go to the doctor and then I think I know that bill is going to be so expensive and I choose not to go. But if I know that maybe I could, maybe I just 
check it out. And if I knew that it was a lot more convenient and affordable, I would probably go more. And, and I feel the same way with the people that we work with. It's hard for us to say, go to the doctor all the time, because we don't know what bill that they're, they're going to come up with. And then we feel bad to say, go right. and get a colonoscopy. And we don't know how that's going to, how much that's going to end up becoming. So yeah. I think yeah. having these other options are so valuable. And then if you do have a doctor that you could recommend me as an example, that's so helpful because it is hard. We don't know doctors outside of these hospitals and then without recommendations or what diet are, are they going to complain that my cholesterol is too high because yeah. I'm eating a low carb diet. It's just frustrating. So I think they, they uh, might, they might, but you know, better, you know, better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's amazing, but thank you so much for joining me today. I think this yeah. is so helpful and I'm very, very interested. So no problem. I will, I'll get you a code too. You know, one okay. of the things that we're thinking of, of trying to do here or not thinking we are going to be doing is we're putting together what we're calling the keto for crowd. And so we're having a crowd of people who are just keto or carnivore folks who are going to be in just one crowd themselves and funding okay. each other's healthcare expenses. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'll, I'll get you a code and you can put it in the show notes. Okay. And if anybody wants to use it and wants to be, you know, put into the, the keto war crowd, we're, we're working with folks like Sean Baker and others who are, mm -hmm. you know, huge carnivore advocates to, to, to build that community. Because per your earlier question, I don't think people in the keto and carnivore communities and other communities too like subsidizing really poor nutrition. And right. so if you can get a group of people together that share the same values as you in terms of what you should put in, be putting in your body, you know, I, I think there's tons of, of value there. So I've, I've been on the keto for two or three years now. I'm down probably 40 pounds and it's been a, a kind of a key to my my health journey. I love what those groups are, are, are doing. So I would love to have your listeners join us in that. Yeah, I think it's so powerful. Uh, we can change a lot and we can do a lot. So I work with some of the most unwell in the carnivore community, but even with the most unwell, maybe born illnesses, chronic illnesses, mm -hmm. even with nutrition, you can move the needle a lot, if not all, all of it. Mm -hmm. And knowing that it's a shame because so we, I was telling you, I took my son, he has, he has a small cough and we went to the, the pulmonologist. They didn't know what was wrong with him. Uh, they did all these tests, like nothing showed up. And they said, just in case, here's a asthma inhaler. We went to the doctor or, anything, or to the pharmacy just to check it out. I would never put him on a steroid, but again, it's, they're not sure. And maybe he has asthma, maybe it doesn't. And the, the prescription was $200 and it's for every month. And it's just a, just in case. A just um, in case. Yeah. And, and I said, no, I, I'm going to, he will even, he'll once in a while have some gluten. So I thought, maybe we just cut out all gluten and, or if, and then the next thing is maybe all dairy and I'll do that before I Elimination, even yeah. putting him on some type of medication and he's seven years old. So mm -hmm. if he gets on these albuterols and other things that can possibly raise your blood sugar, what happens to him later? And I don't think they ever think of that. And instead it's here, pop a pill, pop medicine. And yes, the visit wasn't too bad, but then they added the all the other tests and who knows what I owe right mm -hmm. now, because it's still in the works of the bill coming <laughs> to us. But it's just, we can do a lot with nutrition. And so that's where I just don't think it's fair that I pay so much for insurance for our family. And so this is something that has been so close to my heart. And I wanted to talk to you about it. Love it. Well, we, we'd love to have you guys. And thank you again for, for giving me the time to tell you a bit more about what we're up to. No, it's awesome. I'm happy to support people that are changing, you know, the typical narrative. So yeah. thank you so much. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this conversation. I really like the conversation with Andy because it really opens my eyes to that as a community, this is one step forward into how we take our health back into our hands and do that even with our healthcare. Offline, he told me that many of the members, I think it's like maybe 1.5% of all births are home birth, but in the crowd health community, it's like 40% do actually natural home births at home instead of in the hospitals. It's a community of more like-minded people that want to get their health back into their own hands, including the way we pay for bills and the doctors we work with and the labs we do. I hope you guys check it out. I absolutely plan on checking it out for my family as well. And I hope if anything, this has opened your eyes into what is so wrong with our medical system and our insurance. It truly is cheaper to have a baby in a different country than in our own. And we didn't even talk about the discussion of the shots that are also given and the schedule, the aggressive schedule that they give to newborns compared to other countries. 
I hope this conversation helped you. And if anything, I hope it sparks discussion and some thought into how we can change our medical system or our insurance and coverage in a wonderful country like the US. Okay, guys, make sure to eat a lot of meat. Take care of your bodies because it is the only place you have to live. I will talk to you later. Bye, guys.